Welcome back to my 2019 vegan food tour of Ireland. This is the Everywhere Else edition. If you're driving on any of the motorways, look out for Apple Green, which is the nicest rest stop eatery I've ever been to. When we were here, they were advertising vegan sausage rolls, and while I imagine they will cost more than a euro soon, Steve says they are worth going a little bit out of your way for. verdict. It's actually really good. <laughs> we were traveling north with our friend Shannon up to the Gobbins and a few other spots along the Antrim coast and we decided to spend the first night in Carlingford which is a lovely little town in County Louth with some interesting medieval architecture. Now for those times when it seems at first glance like there may not be any veg friendly restaurants in the area I ought to have shared this resource with you in the first video. IrishVegan.ie has incredibly helpful crowdsourced restaurant listings organized by county. It's even better than Happy Cow because it lists places you'd never expect to have vegan options or to be willing to prepare you a thoughtful meal. I should note that Steve is the one who found this website and he will give me a hard time if I don't tell you that. Anyhow, IrishVegan.ie is how we found the Bay Tree, which does modern Irish cuisine in a comfortable candlelit dining room. I emailed them a week or so ahead of time, and when we arrived, they made us beautiful raspberry mocktails and offered us a choice for each of the three courses. The staff here are so kind and attentive. I hadn't seen Shannon in almost three years, and he and Steve were meeting for the first time, and this restaurant was the perfect cozy spot for some fun and relaxing catch up and getting to know you conversation. The next day, we headed across the border into Northern Ireland, and we figured Valley Castle would be our best bet for dinner. There's a vegetarian cafe called Ursa Minor Bakehouse, but we arrived too late in the day to check it out, unfortunately. We ended up at the Central Wine Bar, another spot we found through Irish Vegan. And while the pizzas are as good as you can expect in small town Ireland, they did have vegan cheese. And the boozy coconut milkshake I had for dessert was totally worth writing home about. The staff here are great as well. We arrived just past food service hours, but the chef was nice enough to accommodate us. Now for one of the restaurants I am most excited to tell you about, Eat Street in Belfast, where we stopped for lunch on the next day on our way back to Dublin. The owners are great, the milkshakes are yummy, and the housemaid seitan is out of this world. Steve is a terrific cook, he makes fantastic seitan cutlets, so much so that whenever we have seitan in restaurants he's like, yeah, mine is better. And I know that sounds cocky, but it's true. But at Eat Street, I asked him if he thought his seitan was better than this seitan, and this was the first time he couldn't actually say that it was. The tofu fish and chips were delicious too, but let me tell you, I still daydream about that seitan chicken burger. Eat Street is definitely in my top five veg restaurants on this island. Oh, and check out these hilarious signs in the bathroom. After our two nights in Dublin, Steve flew home and I rented a car for the rest of my research trip. I was lucky enough to arrive in Kilkenny with enough time for an early dinner at the city's only vegan restaurant, The Cutting Veg, which is the other place I'm most psyched to tell you about. Not only does the food here hit that hearty but healthy sweet spot I always talk about, this breakfast burrito is epic. But best of all, the owner is an absolute peach. Look at the bottom of the menu and you'll see this message from Helen. It has been a dream come true to get the chance of opening my own food outlet and I genuinely pinch myself as I walk in the door every day. You see why I love this place. After the cutting veg, I drove 18 kilometers south to Thomastown, which is a peaceful riverside town with an excellent B&B called The Tower. Now, as a guidebook writer, I have stayed in hundreds of B&Bs over the years and this is one of the most unique. The owner's parents renovated this 12th century tower house back in the 1980s and all the guest rooms open onto the courtyard, kind of like this American style Irish medieval motel. It's, it's really cool. But best of all, because Trish is a caterer as well, she's totally clued into plant-based eating. So she left me this delicious slice of banana walnut bread in my room and in the morning I had many breakfast options to choose from carrot cake granola parfait, cinnamon french toast, chocolate pancakes. This is the only B&B I have ever been to that will make you a smoothie bowl. 
Though I do enjoy every minute I spend in the sunny southeast, I unfortunately did not have time to get back to Wexford on this trip, although I was lucky enough to pass a Wexford strawberry stand on the way from Waterford to Cork. Now, if you see Wexford strawberries advertised anywhere, buy them. Buy them and savor them. They're some of the most delicious strawberries on the planet. This carton cost me eight euros, and when I posted this photo on social media, a couple people commented that eight euros was way too much. But I believe in paying farm workers a livable wage, don't you? American strawberries would cost the same if Big Ag paid farm workers a decent living. After my tour of West Cork, I headed north again, stopping for lunch in Limerick City at the Grove Veggie Kitchen. The menu here is quite heavy on the eggs and dairy cheese, and I found the ladies working there a little bit standoffish, but there were sufficient vegan options, as you can see, and everything was delish, especially the roasted veggie pizza. I continued north back through Galway and into Mayo, where I met up with my friends Shelly and James for a day trip to Ackle Island. And look how even in this Tesco in Swinford, County Mayo, we found plenty of vegan treats. Driving onward to County Sligo, I stopped in Enniscrone, which is a very pleasant little town known for its Victorian seaweed baths and a beach that is perfect for surfing. I'd stayed at a hostel the night before and hadn't had breakfast, and so it was a nice surprise to find such a veg-friendly cafe in this small town. Tracy's even has a separate vegetarian menu, quite an extensive one too. I was also really impressed with Tracy and her staff, who clearly love what they do. Arriving in Sligo Town, I had breakfast the next day at the Sweet Beet Cafe, which is one of those vegetarian cafes that's almost fully plant-based apart from the dairy milk coffee option. The food here is filling and so flavorful, and the coffee is fantastic. Although I have to say that both times I've been here, I haven't found the vibe as welcoming as at my favorite spots I've reviewed in these videos. From Sligo, I headed back to Dublin, so be sure to watch that video if you haven't already. If you've enjoyed this vegan food tour and are planning to visit Ireland in the foreseeable future, I'd be so grateful if you'd consider purchasing a copy of my guidebook. You'll find the buy links in the video notes. And if you have any vegan or veg-friendly restaurant recommendations to share, I would love to hear them, so please leave me a comment below this video. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy your trip to Ireland.